We are all aware that the Earth is mostly made up of water. This simple fact has been taught to us since we started going to school, and it has been repeated by our teachers on multiple occasions. We may also have learned that the Pacific is the world's largest part of the ocean. However, the vast scale of this ocean's largest part will almost certainly surprise you. In fact, to claim that the Pacific Ocean is massive would not nearly be enough. The Pacific Ocean is immense. It is so huge that it may be difficult to visualize. But today, in this video, I'll show you the Pacific Ocean and how big it really is. To begin, let's say that you are on a boat at the Pacific Ocean's coordinates. That means you're near the coasts of the countries Chile and Peru in South America. Then suddenly, you decide to board a submarine and descend to the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, where you eventually discover a way out to the other side of the world by drilling through the Earth and emerging on the other side. Now, wouldn't that be a real thrill? However, regardless of how far you thought you'd gotten, you're still stuck inside the Pacific Ocean. Specifically, you are in the Gulf of Tonkin, which lies close to Vietnam's and China's coasts. The Pacific Ocean is so large that it has multiple antipodes or places that could be found on the opposite sides of the globe but are still part of the ocean. Although parts of the Pacific Ocean cover more than half of the planet's surface, the longest continuous body of water is between the Indonesian islands and Colombia's coast. This continuous body of water covers over 19,800 kilometers. Obviously, this is a massive distance, large enough to put the entire diameter of the moon between the distances. In fact, five moons could fit in this space and still have plenty to spare. When we look at Google Maps, the Pacific Ocean appears to cover about half of the globe. Even if I emphasize that the Pacific takes up a huge portion of the ocean, it's important to highlight that this depiction of the Pacific Ocean is quite misleading. The truth is you can never see half of the Earth at the same time. This is because the world is formed like a sphere, which leads to this so-called horizon, which is the point where the planet begins curving away from your point of view. Be reminded that no matter how far away you travel from the Earth or see what it looks like from above, you'll always meet a horizon that prevents you from seeing the entire globe. That is to say, rather than demonstrating half of the planet's surface, the Pacific Ocean takes up around one-third of the planet's surface, which is still massive, massive enough not to be ignored. There are two distinct methods of dividing the Earth's surface into two equal hemispheres. Most of us are probably aware of the eastern and western hemispheric views of the world. However, this notion isn't based on strong pieces of evidence and was just from the claims of the British people in the 19th century. At that time, they believed that they were the center of the world. Then came a new way of dividing the Earth, resulting in two hemispheres, the water hemisphere and the land hemisphere. The two sides of the globe with the most water and the other with the most land. The Pacific Ocean covers the majority of the water hemisphere. Moreover, the water hemisphere consists of 89% water, 5% polar ice cap, and only 6% of it is composed of dry land. This means that if you become stuck in this part of the Earth, it might be really hard for you to find land. The Pacific Ocean has a surface size of 165.25 million square kilometers, which is difficult to comprehend if you aren't into mathematics. To demonstrate clearly, consider the size of the combined area of the continents North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia, Antarctica, and even Greenland. That would only take 148 million square kilometers. Those continents when combined are big enough, yet smaller when compared with the Pacific's measurement. This means that you can put all of the continents mentioned inside of it and still have millions of square kilometers left over. If you're still not getting this, I'll give you another analogy. Let's assume that the planet Mars counts every single square kilometer of its surface, including every valley, canyon, and crater. What happens if we pour the Pacific Ocean over the planet Mars? Well, all of Mars will be destroyed since its surface size is only 145 million square kilometers. And that's nothing compared to the Pacific Ocean, which covers an area amounting to 165.25 million square kilometers, way 
larger than Mars's surface area. At this time, we're just discussing the Pacific's surface area, and we're not even learning about its depth yet. It's important to note that the Pacific Ocean is interesting not only in the space it takes up, but its depth is something we must not ignore as well, especially since it's the deepest ocean on the planet. The Challenger Deep, located in the Marianas Trench, is the world's deepest point, which measures about 11 kilometers beneath the ocean. However, there are also other trenches in the world that have depth points almost similar to that of the Challenger Deep. I'm referring to the Tonga Trench, Philippine Trench, and Kuril Kamchatka Trench, which measure over 10.3 kilometers deep. With this, these trenches have a mean depth of over 4,000 meters across the Pacific. That gives the Pacific Ocean an average depth of over 2,600 times, way deeper than an average American swimming pool's depth. With the Pacific Ocean's immense size and depth, it solely contains 710 million cubic kilometers of water, which is equal to half of all oceanic water on the planet. Additionally, this information serves as proof of the Polynesian explorer's courage and intelligence in discovering this part of the ocean. So, who are these Polynesian explorers? Well, they are the people who set out in an undiscovered and uncharted Pacific Ocean that was larger than all of the continents put together, and even larger than an entire planet, just because they were hoping to discover more islands in the world, which they eventually managed to accomplish. They discovered that the Pacific Ocean has over 25,000 different islands stretched out over seemingly unreachable distances. By the year 1200, the Polynesians were able to reach these unreachable places from their starting point in Taiwan. However, even if a thousand years had passed, some of these islands are impossible to reach even until now. The Pacific Ocean is enormous enough that it contains many of the world's most isolated and difficult to reach locations. For example, in the Pacific lies Honolulu and Hawaii, which is the world's most remote city with a population of over 100,000 people. The nearest city from Honolulu is San Francisco, which is almost 3,800 kilometers away. Honolulu and San Francisco's distance is the same distance as New York City is from Los Angeles, but the Polynesians were able to discover it almost 700 years ago. Easter Island is approximately 2,000 kilometers away from other places, which makes it the world's most remote inhabited island. The nearest island to it is Pitcairn Island, which is an incredibly remote and difficult to reach island. Pitcairn Island is about 2,600 kilometers away from the nearest settlement on the island of Mangareva, which is home to over 500 people and is 3,500 kilometers away from the nearest continent, South America. The world's most remote airport is located in South America. The nearest alternative airport is in the Gambia. Gambier Islands, which is 2,600 kilometers away from Easter Island, and the next major airport from it is approximately 3,700 kilometers away in Santiago. Alternative airports near Easter Island are quite further away from each other than the airports at the South Pole. In fact, the nearest other airports in the South Pole are only over 1,300 kilometers away from each other. Despite this, the Polynesians had managed to discover it over 1,200 years ago, maybe through canoes. In comparison to thousands of navigators, the Polynesians were the ones who were the most skilled discoverers and explorers, for they were able to improve their talents and had learned more about it. Who would have thought that it'd be possible to learn about the islands across a planet-sized ocean? The process of discovering things truly takes time and patience, but there is only one way to be able to accomplish it. You have to start your journey right away. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Please click the bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos are posted. And as always, thanks for watching Ponder This.